In this video, we're going to talk about analyzing rational functions, and we're specifically going to focus on asymptotes and getting into what's called end behavior asymptotes, sometimes known as slant asymptotes. Um, so let's take a look here, and I'm going to cover up these graphs, and we're going to talk about these in just a little bit. Um, but let's talk about how you find end behavior asymptotes. So we've talked about analyzing the degree, where if the degree on top is higher than the bottom, then there's no horizontal asymptote. If the degrees are the same, then we would divide the coefficients. And if the degree on the bottom is bigger, then it's automatically y equals 0. So what we're going to focus on now is when the degree is on, on top is bigger, it doesn't have a horizontal asymptote. Okay, but it does have what's called an end behavior asymptote. So it has something that the ends are doing, okay? Um, they're not going towards just like y equals 4 or y equals 0, but they're often following, they're following a different equation. Could be linear, quadratic, depends on the difference in the degree here. So how we figure this out is using long division, so polynomial long division. So we're just actually going to divide this. So go ahead and x goes into x squared x times. So then multiply this out. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. Then we'll go ahead and subtract. So x squared minus x squared is 0. Negative 2x minus negative 5x is positive 3x. And then carry down this 3. And then do it again. So how many times does x go into 3x? It goes in there three times. And now the cool thing about end behavior is once you get to the end here where you don't have another variable, then you're actually done because you ignore the remainder for an end behavior asymptote. So if we were to finish this out, we'd get 3x minus 15 here. Then you'd subtract, um, get 0, and then 3 minus a negative 15 is 18. So we'd actually have a remainder 18 here. But the end behavior of the graph doesn't worry about the remainder. It only goes with this initial part. So you ignore the remainder. So our end behavior asymptote is actually the graph y equals, or the equation y equals x plus 3. So when we take a look at this function, okay, we will see that the ends are going to follow this linear function, okay, because x plus 3 looks like that. Um, we also know that this has, some vert has a vertical asymptote. So if we take a look here, we've got x minus 5. So for the vertical asymptote, we'd set that equal to 0 um, and solve. So x equals 5 is going to be a vertical asymptote. So when we look at this graph here, okay, so this, um, if you had just looked in your normal standard window of negative 10 to 10, you would have seen this. And so you'd only seen part of the graph. But if you zoom out a little bit, you, you start to see the other branch here. Okay, and you can see um, this vertical asymptote. Hopefully in this first graph, you can see, okay, there's a split. There's a definite split there. Okay, and now this obviously isn't going horizontal, nor is it going horizontal up here. Um, but what it is doing is it's actually following the line x plus 3. So it's got a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 1, and it's actually following that line. And you can kind of start to see it in this window. Uh, but when I zoomed out even further, so look here, I'm, I'm way up at like 200 and down to negative 200. Then you can really start to see this x plus 3 line. Okay, that it's following this x plus 3 line. My slope's a little off here. But it's following that x plus 3 line at the ends. It's getting so incredibly close to that. As you zoom out further and further, you can't even tell that there's a difference. Same with this vertical asymptote. The further you zoom out, the more and more it just looks like a straight up and down line. So as you get to, to way zoomed out from the graph, it just looks like these two asymptotes. But then you can kind of see that. So when you zoom out, you can see the end behavior asymptote. So now when we actually talk about end behavior, um, so this is the actual asymptote. If we're talking about the it in limit notation, we would say the limit as x approaches negative infinity, woo, negative infinity meaning the way left side of the graph. 
Okay, so way over here, that wasn't much better. Um, so way over here, where is your graph at? Well, my graph is way down here. Okay, so the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the function is negative infinity. And then if we look at the very right-hand side of the graph, which is as x approaches positive infinity, where is your graph? So if we're way over here in the x's, what y's are we getting back? And again, that's way up at infinity. So often we'll talk about end behavior in terms of limits. So let's take a, a look at this one and, and do end behavior asymptotes or horizontal, depending on what it is, um, and then vertical asymptotes. So we'll take a look here. So let's um, divide this bottom polynomial in to the top using long division. So how many times, um, what do we have to multiply 2x times to get x cubed? So in this case, you have to get down to a 1 because there's a 1 here. So how do you get 2 to be 1? Well, that's by a half. And then we have x to x cubed, so we need x squared. So then multiply 1 half x squared times 2x, so you'll get 1x cubed. Half x squared times negative 1 will be negative 1 half x squared. And then we're going to subtract here. So subtract x cubed minus x cubed, you get 0. Negative 2x squared minus a negative 1 half is negative 1 and a half. Or I'm going to write it as a fraction, as a not a, as an improper fraction, so 3 halves. So negative 3 halves x squared. Carry down your next term. Then we need to multiply again. Okay, so now what do we multiply times 2 to get negative 3 halves? So the other way you can think about that is if you need to use a calculator, um, would be doing 3 halves divided by 2. So if you take 3 halves divided by 2, you would get 3 fourths. And then x to x squared would be an x. So now if we multiply these together, okay, so 3 fourths times 2 would be 6 fourths, which simplifies to 3 halves. Okay, so we get 3 halves, and then x times x is x squared. 3 fourths times negative 1 is negative 3 fourths x. Okay, then we're just going to subtract these. So negative 3 halves minus 3 halves x squared is 0. 1 minus a negative 3 fourths is 1 and 3 fourths positive. Okay, and then carry down this negative 1. And again, you can write this as a mixed number. You could write it as an improper fraction if you want. Um, I usually like improper fractions, so I'm going to write that as 7 fourths. Okay, so now you have to do the final one here. So what times 2 will give you this? Okay, so again, the backwards version of that is 7 fourths divided by 2 will give you this. Okay, so if you do 7 fourths divided by 2, you'll get 7 eighths. And then you already have the x, so just 7 eighths. Now here's the thing, you can be done because you, you don't have an x term here and we're going to ignore the remainder. So this is our end behavior asymptote. Okay, so now I've, I've, I didn't cover the two graphs this time. Um, but our end behavior asymptote is a parabola. Okay, so in this case it's a parabola. So you can kind of start to see this on our normal negative 10 to 10 window, right? Like you see this end and then you see this end. So you can kind of see that parabola happening. Again, as you zoom out further, you really start to see this, okay? So here's that end behavior asymptotes. The ends of your functions are starting, the end of your function is starting to look like this asymptote or that function the further and further you zoom out. Then we also have, um, okay, so let me write down the end behavior asymptote here. So the end behavior asymptote is y equals 1 half x squared plus 3 fourths x plus 7 eighths. 
Then we have a vertical asymptote, okay, because we have that denominator there. So we have a, a bottom, okay? So the vertical asymptote is gonna be where that equals zero. So if you need to set it equal to zero and solve this way, or if you can do it in your head, that's fine. So add one, divide by two, and our vertical asymptote is one half. Okay, so x equals one half, which again, you can see on these graphs here. Okay, here's your vertical asymptote at x equals one half, and then that stays there as well as you're zooming out. Okay, so it just kind of helps give you an idea of what this function looks like as you zoom out. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Um, so again, I've already graphed it to kind of help think about it. So in this first graph, it kind of looks like it's not really doing anything. Like we for sure don't see a vertical asymptote, okay? Which means that this bottom probably doesn't have any real solutions. So we, if it's either, it's not factorable, okay? And when you do quadratic formula, you're gonna get imaginary solutions. So by looking at this graph, we already know that because we don't see any vertical asymptotes, okay? But now the end behavior one is a little bit less obvious because we see this, okay, and we see this, but what's it doing, okay? Um, so when we take a look at this one, so now this top degree is the same as the bottom. So they're both a degree two polynomial. So remember when that happens, then you divide the coefficients to get the end behavior asymptote. So our end behavior asymptote is actually y equals four. So that means the further and further we zoom out, the closer and closer those ends get to four, which you can see a little bit better in this bottom one where I've zoomed out even further. Okay, you can start to see that those ends are really, really going towards four. So the, the further and further I go to the left, the closer and closer this is gonna be to four. The further and further I go to the right, the closer and closer that is going to be to four as well. So the only asymptotes here are this one, no vertical. Then in this one, okay, so now the degree on top is one. The degree on bottom is two. So when the bottom degree is bigger than the top, that's automatically an end behavior asymptote of y equals zero, which we can see. This is getting really close to zero here. This is getting really close to zero here, even in the negative 10 to 10 window. Then we wanna deal with the vertical asymptotes. And from looking at the equation or looking at the graph, you can see there's two of them. Okay, so we've got one here and we've got one here. So when we take a look at this um, denominator here, okay, we need to factor it to solve this quadratic. So what are the factors of negative 10 that add to negative three? So that would be negative five and positive two. So the denominator factors to x, whoops, x minus five, x plus two. And then we set that equal to zero and we solve each of those. So x equals five is a vertical asymptote and x equals negative two is a vertical asymptote. And we can see that clearly on the graph. So just remember as a recap, um, when you have a polynomial or a rational function, okay, so you have something like this, ax to the m with more terms on top, and you have bx to the n on bottom with more terms possibly, okay, if your degree on top is bigger than the bottom, okay, then you have to do long division, okay, so then you have to do long division to determine the end behavior asymptote. If m is equal to n, then you automatically have y equals the ratio of the coefficients. So you divide those front two numbers to get your n behavior asymptote. Okay, and if the top is less than the bottom, okay, then you automatically have y equals zero as your end behavior asymptote.